to dive in. So I'm starting, this is the Learn homepage. To access virtual classroom, you'll go to Connect and you'll choose virtual classroom from the list. Some of you may see a, a message on your screen indicating that um, you've never accessed it before and are you okay with moving forward? Just say yes or check the boxes and pass through. Um, it's just um, the LTI passing your information on to Bongo so it knows who you are. Okay, so once you land on this uh, virtual classroom meeting page, depending on your role, you'll have a different view. I am in with an instructor role, TA role would be similar, staff, anyone who has like editing access to the learn course would see this view. Students view is slightly different. When you're a student and you access the meetings, your recorded meetings and your active meetings are all merged into a single list. And beneath that list, you'll have a Teams meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're not gonna discuss video assignment today, but there is a feature within a group video assignment that allows group members to schedule virtual classroom meetings with their fellow group members that can also be recorded and used for uh, submitting the assignment. So that's where those meetings will show up for students. Okay. So to create a virtual classroom meeting, you're going to start with, actually, before I do that, I just want to point out these three dots up here. These will take you to the Bongo vendor help. Just if you get stuck, that's there. And then Tanya will share some links to the chat later with our custom documentation and other things that we've worked on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So to create a virtual classroom meeting, you're going to start with this big plus sign down in the bottom right corner of your screen. And when you click on it, you'll see the schedule meeting pop up window. You'll notice that a few fields are required. So I'm going to start with a meeting title. And I always put testing in my titles just because if I run a report, I want to know it's a real meeting versus a testing meeting. So mine all tend to have these. You would name it according to what you're offering in that meeting. Um, to add a date for the meeting, so if you want to schedule this for a week from now, two weeks from now, you can toggle through the calendar, select the date that's appropriate, and then click OK. And then when you want to add the time for the meeting, you would click on it and you get this clock that allows you to move the time. You'll notice that only the one is selected and only the hour is adjusting. If you want to adjust the minutes, you have to click on them. And then the options here change and you drag and drop for that time. And then same goes with AM or PM. So when you're doing that, you'll want to just double check that you've selected the right times. There's no way to manually enter the time. So it can be a little annoying, but it is what it is. So I'm going to say OK to that. And you'll see now that I've scheduled a meeting for November 11th at 1220 p.m. And then there's this now button. And I'm going to use this now button um, so that I can show you how to launch a meeting and go through the actual meeting interface. But I'm going to leave it unchecked for just right now, and then we'll come back to it. Next up is your max duration of your meeting. My recommendation is to always max out the duration. Um, and the reason I recommend that is because if you schedule a meeting for 15 minutes and you run 32, at minute 30, it's going to automatically kick everyone out of the meeting and start rendering the recording or just delete it if recording is not selected. Um, so, and there's no easy way to extend that. Like you can't extend it once you're in the meeting. So my recommendation is to go at the max duration, and then when you're done with your meeting, just end the meeting, and the rendering will begin at that point. You won't have that dead space at the end. Beneath the max duration is the option to repeat weekly. So you can repeat weekly up to 15 weeks, depending on context for you. This is handy if you're offering, um, if you're offering uh, office hours to a class and you want it to repeat every week for the duration of that term, you can select the 12 weeks and you have a reoccurring scheduled office hour meeting that students in your class can access. But I'm gonna just turn that off for today because I don't wanna create all those additional meetings. Underneath that, you'll see the 
option to automatically record the meeting. Um, this is fantastic if you're um, forgetful like me. Um, I often forget to start recording my meetings once I'm in there. But I do want to let you know that if you do select this, as soon as you enter the meeting, it will be recording. So if you plan on doing any prep, prior to the students joining the meeting. So talking with your TAs, assigning work, any of that, even uploading your presentation, all of that'll be included in the recording. If it doesn't matter to you, select it here and then you don't have to worry about it. But if you do want to um, not have that happen, I'll show you another way to start recording once you're in the meeting. Beneath that is the published recorded meetings. So this is what allows your students who may have missed the live class or um, maybe joined for part of it or just wanna come back and refresh it. If this is selected, then that meeting will end up down here in the recorded meetings list for you. And it'll be integrated in the active meetings for the students. One thing I do wanna note is that if you do not select this, but you have recorded your meeting, as an instructor, you'll still see that down here, but your students won't. So we do have ways for you to take that meeting that's been recorded and add it directly to learn content. Um, and we can walk you through that if you need help. There's also documentation to take you through the steps. So there are other ways to share that recorded meeting if so desired. The next one is allow external participants. So this one here could be great. We have one use case with an instructor who's offering office hours for multiple courses, but doesn't want to create the office hour meetings in multiple places. So what they've done is they've enabled the external participants option for their office hours, then shared that link to the other courses, like not the course that it was created in. Um, so students from any one of the three courses could join that same office hour meeting and ask their questions. If you have guest speakers you would like to participate in your lecture, you can also use this external link, which doesn't require them to have access to the Learn course or a WADIM account. Um, when this is enabled, users joining using this external link will have to enter their first and last names to um, get through to the Bonco meeting uh, lobby page. So I'm going to leave that one enabled, and um, I'm also going to leave the published recording enabled. And now the last one here is invite your entire class. So normally you would just leave this enabled, but if you wanted to have a meeting for a subset of students, then you can unselect that, and there is a manage invites option. So I'm going to unselect it for today just so I can walk you through the manage invite steps. And I'm also going to change my time to now. Um, meetings can only be launched within, I believe it's 15 minutes of their actual start time. Um, and so for me to display, it's easiest to just use now. So I'm going to save this. And so this slow save, I'm not sure why it's doing this all of a sudden. It never used to be this slow. It used to join and save really quickly. And I'm not sure why it's changed. So patience is a virtue in this situation. It will save eventually. I'm just not sure how long it'll take. I have navigated away and come back and it's been fine. So just to be aware. Okay, so now I have a meeting and it's scheduled for now because that's what I changed in the setting. It has my meeting title that I included. And then just to the right of all that information is this actions button. And when I click on this actions button, I have a few things and you'll see that cancel and edit are grayed out. And that's because of the time of the meeting. If this was scheduled for a week in advance, you could edit it, you could cancel it. But now that we're close to live, it locks it down so you can't accidentally delete a meeting you need right away. Um, this is the external link. So if I want to copy that and I'm going to throw it in the chat here. Um, if anyone wants to join this meeting and has two screens and can still watch, once I launch it, you'll be able to access it through the external invite using the link in the chat here. It's your call. I don't want to cause distraction, but if you do want to join and see what it looks like from that student perspective, that link will do that for you. And um, but you can't join until I join. So 
Um, and one other thing I'm going to talk about quick is manage invites. So when you're not inviting the entire class, you'll have to invite the individuals that you want to include. So right now I see three students who are on my roster. I'm going to click the sync roster button just to make sure I haven't missed anyone. And you're going to see this error. This error is super common. It doesn't impact your meeting as much as it appears to. The three users who are not synchronized simply have roles that don't require being invited to be able to access the meeting. So that would be your TAs. That would be instructors, staff, um, anyone who has elevated editor access can automatically join this meeting. Um, so they won't appear here. So that's that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the names of the people I'm going to invite to the meeting and I'm going to click save. Now those three users can come here and choose this launch link to access the meeting um, and the rest of the users would use the external link um, assuming that I made it available via email or whatever method of sharing that I have at my disposal. So I'm going to launch a meeting now. Actually, I'm going to pause for a second and um, ask if anyone has questions right now or if we should keep going. Okay, it doesn't look like we have quite, oh, there we go. Perfect, thank you. All right, so we're going to move ahead then. So now I've clicked the launch button and I'm brought to this meeting lobby page. And um, this is my invite link. So this is similar to the external link that I shared in the meeting chat. But these numbers here, they're specific to the meeting you're in. Each meeting is assigned its own code and these phone numbers. So they don't transfer to other meetings. If students have issues joining with their computer, they can always call in to one of the numbers and access at least the audio part of the meeting that way. Um, and then there are additional little tips and things to be aware of for um, before you're joining the meeting. So before my time expires, I'm going to click enter meeting room. And OK, so I am going to join with microphone quickly. There may be some echoing that you'll hear. I'm not sure because I'm wearing a headset. It might be OK, but I will mute myself in the virtual classroom meeting once I do this. But I want to show you what happens when I click microphone. You're going to see this pop up up here that you or your users would have to allow access to the microphone to be able to join. Then you're brought to an echo test where you would speak. And if you can hear yourself, you click the green thumbs up and you're added to the conference. So now I'm just going to mute my microphone in there just so that I'm not hearing multiple things. And if anyone who would like to join the meeting, see there's a few in there already, wants to do so, now is your opportunity. Okay, perfect, perfect, lovely. Okay, so I'm going to keep talking. If you, if more of you want to join, that's great. If not, that's okay too. Um, everything will still be happening in teams but um, all of you in the meeting thank you so much you're going to make displaying uh, breakout rooms much easier in a minute so okay I'm hearing echo so I'm going to mute microphones oh that's not where I want to do it there I'm going to mute all okay so sorry I'm going to start in the top left and they've recently redesigned this whole interface. So things used to be in different places a couple months ago. So um, I'm going to try and not miss anything and uh, hopefully um, cover it all. So I'm going to start with the very top icon. The two people is the participants icon. And here you can see I am the, um, I have a different little square status. That's because I am the presenter. So my, um, I'm sort of the first person to join. So if a TA were to join before the instructor, they would have this status, but you can hand that status off by clicking on someone's name and either making them a presenter, a moderator. Um, you can also start a private chat with an individual or you can remove them from the meeting. Um, I'm not sure if there'd be a need for that, but it is possible. Um, 
I'm going to make Tanya presenter now, and you'll see my name has changed. She's now got control. I'm not doing anything. And um, yeah, so that's how that works. And then I'm going to um, take presenter back now and uh, walk through the rest of it. Okay, so um, I want to point to these permissions before I forget because they move this. And um, when you click that lock at the top of your participants list, you'll get a list of features that you can lock or unlock for it, the participants in the meeting. So if I want to lock everybody's webcams, I can flip that. Same with whether or not I want to see other webcams. So I can leave webcams enabled, but just turn it off from my view so I don't have to look at them. Um, or lose them on my, like lose my space on my screen because when cameras join and maybe I'll ask a few of you to do that in a little bit, um, your whiteboard drops lower and it gets a little bit smaller, but they've added some new fun features that will help with that as well that we'll get to. So these are all pretty self-explanatory. Self um, when you're using the lock in the participants, this applies to everyone in the meeting. So just something to be aware of. And I'm just gonna cancel that for now. Um, I will also point out that, oops, sorry, when you um, click on a user's name, you do have the option to start a private chat. They've changed this functionality. The private and public chats used to um, display both in the same place. And now they're not quite the same. So when I click on chat here, I only see the public chat. I have to go back to participants to see private chat messages. So I'm not sure if I like this, but it's what they've done. So we're dealing with it for right now. Um, and then I think that pretty much covers the participants for right now. I might pop in, into that in a minute. Um, public chat is public chat, functions the same as most other um, tools out there. And then beneath the chat, there's an option for polling. Um, some of the it can be handy, but some of the limitations for this polling feature is that you cannot create poll questions ahead of time. They have to be created on the fly in your meeting, but they do display information. So what I've done is I've just shared a poll. Everyone should see and can start selecting answers. And then as answers fill in, you'll see those percentages are changing. And if some don't respond, that's okay too. Um, you can sort of ask your question on the fly, see what the students have to say. And then you have the option to stop polling or stop polling and publish. So I'm just gonna hit the stop polling and publish and you'll see that it gets added to your whiteboard. So here is the results of the polls, poll I just submitted. Um, and you can see your numbers. The students can see those numbers. It can become part of the presentation if it's relevant. Um, and if you don't want it to be included, um, I don't know what others see. Um, Tanya, what do you see as, are you a presenter? I Tanya. had to go through the external link. So I'm seeing it as a, a student essentially. Okay. So Tammy, I just see the percentages. So you just see the percentages? I, I see what you have on your slide. Yep. So you don't see this over here? No, no. Who responded? So that's probably a good thing. I don't know that you would really want that to be public but okay great thank you for clarifying that for me it's hard i always see it from my perspective so i'm not sure what others see okay so that's the basics of polling there are um other poll options like if you wanted to do a yes or no poll true false things like that they all exist there um and i'll talk about how to clear this later that's part of the annotation tools so now i'm going to pop over to breakout rooms and before I start creating breakout rooms, it's basically a way to split the meeting into small chunks. So if you want to divide your students into anywhere from two to eight breakout rooms, I'm gonna pick four just to be random today. You'll see the option to set the duration of the breakout room. So maybe you just want it to be a 10 minute little side chat and then everyone to come back to the group and report their findings or however you want to run it or where it fits for your meeting. Um, there are a couple ways where you can populate it. You can drag and drop 
users into groups, or you can click this randomly assign. And you'll notice that I wasn't assigned any groups and that's okay. Um, I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So what I'm gonna do now is when I click create, those of you who have actually joined the meeting, you're gonna, it's gonna look like you got kicked out because you're being asked to join the breakout room now. And it's the same steps that you would have gone through to join the meeting, um, sharing your microphone, things like that. So I'm gonna click create and we'll just pause for a second while everyone, if you can join the breakout rooms, that would be really fantastic. If not, don't worry about it. I can still display the next part without it. So I'm gonna click create and there we go. So we've got some people in some rooms. So now all of you will have a similar, so I just got an alert from the main meeting saying that I am the only person in this conference because everybody else has joined the breakout rooms are in and are in side meetings. So one of the things you can do as an instructor is you can pop in and join the audio and you'll just hear what they're saying within that one room, one breakout room. Sorry, the meetings are talking to me. So you can also choose to join the room. If I choose that, it's going to kick me out of the main meeting and I'll just join with listen only just so I don't get the echo. But now you can see that I'm in room one. So this is the same view you have. You can see the participants who are also in your room. You can see Sue was the first one to join. So she's gotten the presenter title. You can still do chat with each other and we'll talk about closed captioning later. So I'm going to leave this meeting and I just wanna make sure, yeah, I still have the other meeting open behind. So I'm back here. I'm going to not join the audio because I don't need it. So now you can see that we've got the different rooms are still here and it's, oh, I didn't join audio. So I'm gonna do that quick because I lost the ability, sorry, I lost the ability. I still don't have it. I have to join by mic. Sorry, I'm gonna join by mic and now I can join the audio. So if you want to be able to, it's odd, because you would think just joining the audio would do it, but if you wanna be able to hear other audio, you need to join your microphone. So those are there. You can also choose to add, so say someone joined the meeting late right now, you can go back in here and then assign those people to new rooms. So as students come in, you can have your TA doing that for you or whoever is helping you facilitate the meeting, um, or they can let you know, like um, you can set up different alerts for chats and things as well. So it's just something to be aware of, um, but there's a lot of flexibility. Um, the one big thing though, is that while breakout rooms are happening, sorry, I've got a lot of alerts popping up here. Um, while you're in the meeting, if you're recording your main meeting and everyone's in breakout rooms, there's nothing included in the recording. Breakout rooms are not recorded. You can't go back and see what was done after the fact. So if you are going to use breakout rooms during a meeting that you're recording and making available, you may wanna stop the recording and I'll start it first, but when you choose to, you can pause the recording and then resume later. So that is my recommendation if you're using breakout rooms, just so you don't have 15, 20 minutes of dead space in the middle of the recording. Um, and assuming you don't have access to editing tools where you can cut that out. So I'm going to end all the breakout rooms now and um, everyone should get kicked back to the main meeting. And as you do, you'll see sound gets joined and different things as people are returning into this meeting, which is perfect. Um, and then underneath breakout rooms is closed captioning. And I know this sounds very exciting, but unfortunately it's not it's not the best tool in the world. So I'm gonna click on this enable captioning and I'm going to now have this closed captioning window. What that requires is someone to actually manually type what's being said during the meeting if you're trying to use it for a live event. So if that's not something you have someone available to do, I don't recommend enabling it here 
There is another way where you can add closed captioning files to the recorded meeting by uploading the SRT and possibly a VTT file. Although one of those versions, I, I apologize, I don't remember which, one of them will not work for me, no matter what I try. So closed captioning is there, possible, but I don't think Bongo is the best tool to do that. So just something to be aware of. So I've covered this left-hand panel. I'll pause and see if we have any questions before I move on to some of the other options here. Everyone's good. Um, yeah, public chat, polling, we covered it all. So. All right, I'm gonna take that as a no questions, perfect, and I'm gonna move on. So I'm gonna close this panel just to get a little bit more real estate. And um, I'm gonna actually share my webcam again. And you'll see I have this new pop-up again to share my camera. I'm gonna allow it. And there I am, and I'm gonna start sharing. And you'll see me pop up here, yeah, so. If you don't want to see me, <laughs> you can go back to this and you can lock that and apply. So now only mine and other moderators, moderators cameras are visible. Um, you can also choose to, um, there's an option here to, oh, that's not what I want. Make this one full screen, which I don't really want to do. You can also make your, um, presentation full screen. So there are different options. As people join their cameras, you'll see them run across the top here. There is a limit of 10. So just keep that in mind. Um, again, there's new functionality down the road that will allow more cameras to join, but only display 10. And then if an 11th person's camera who's, sorry, if 11th person has joined a camera, then they would replace one of the 10 along the top. Um, but we don't know when that's coming. So I'm gonna turn my camera off again. I just wanted you to be aware that this block appears and you can close more things and um, will run sideways. So they'll go from left to right if they're sharing cameras. So I'm gonna stop sharing, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> um, and then back along the top here, sorry, um, is the meeting title. I gave this um, virtual classroom meeting. So it would be lecture one, module one, whatever that context is for your course. And then here's my option to start recording again. So I'll turn that on. You'll get alerts from every action. So if you join your microphone or leave audio, those little pop-ups will appear here in this top right corner. You also have a signal strength, which right now is actually pretty great. Um, usually when I'm done doing these meetings, I'm red. Um, and beside the um, signal alert is uh, another kebab menu with three dots where you can access some additional settings. You can also make everything full screen again. And I don't know if you see that because I lose my meeting square around what's being recorded, but it does go full screen and it gets rid of your whole from your browser bar up. Underneath that are some more settings. Now these settings are more for you, but also can apply to others. So if you want to receive an alert when someone chats to you in the meeting, you can turn that on. You can also set up a pop-up alert. So if someone chats, you'll see it. This is these are very handy if you're if you don't have a, another person helping you moderate the meeting and you're trying to teach what you're teaching, plus still keep an eye out for questions and things like that. Those might be helpful tools to try. Um, there's also audio alerts and pop-up alerts for people joining the meeting. Um, I don't know that I would I would enable those because you'll hear the pings every time someone joins and it may get picked up on the recording. So user preference. You can also adjust your font size here. So my eyes are old, so I wanna make it bigger for now. And then underneath the application, you have data savings. So you can decide to disable all webcams and all desktop sharing to ensure that you're able to continue on the meeting if you are having network issues. 
And then under the advanced, there are a couple additional options to help you route traffic so that um, we don't lose your meeting. So I'm gonna save that just so that I have the larger font for right now, because why not? Beneath those settings, this is your annotation tool. And this one's kind of fun. So um, you do have the option of using different tools. I would like to point out this red trailing dot. If I were to say, like, use it to point out, look at how um, high this number is. But I don't indicate what I'm actually referring to. The red dot's not recorded. So the students watching this recording won't have the context that you were circling um, poll answer A when you make those statements. So try and verbally describe what you're referring to and don't rely on this pointer when you're recording. You do have the option to draw. And I did see that there are a lot of math people on this session and unfortunately, no, you cannot draw equations. You can try using this. You can also try typing with a text box in here. Um, but any of the math instructors um, who have tried Bongo haven't been very successful in getting equations or being able to write live using equations on the fly within the meeting. I might have a solution for you, not for the live aspect, but for at least displaying your um, equations. And we'll talk about that when we're sharing, when I get to sharing presentations. So um, you can adjust your font size, color. Um, it does remember, cause I'm pretty sure I selected um, the red the last time I taught this and it was still selected. So it will remember. You can also undo an annotation this will clear all annotations, including your poll box. So I'm going to do that now. And then this last option is pretty cool. So this is the multi-user whiteboard. And this you can see. So if one of you picks, yeah, there you go. So if you've selected a tool, everyone in your meeting can be participating in this whiteboard presentation. So you can have students making comments or notes or even editing someone else's work, whatever you see fit. This is one way you can do that. And it can be fun. Um, and you do get to see who did what, which is nice. So there is someone at least visually associated with it. Now, I'm not sure what this looks like when it's recorded. So I'll, uh, I am recording this part. Um, and I just zoomed in. Um, I am recording it. So I'll let you know what happens afterwards. I'm not sure. Okay, so um, if you're using the whiteboard, and I'm going to throw a little loop here, you have up to 10 slides. So you can toggle through those 10 slides, but you can't add any more. So if, if you needed more slides, um, you may want to look at either uploading a, a, a blank PDF with 15 pages or 20 pages. So then each one of the PDF pages could be a new slide for you. You can also do that with PowerPoint presentations. Um, and I'm actually going to walk you through both those steps. Let's do it right now. So I'm going to turn off the uh, multi-user whiteboard now and Everyone should have lost access immediately. So I'm gonna talk about a couple things now quickly. Ah, I see that question. This one here, the undo arrow, will just undo the last annotation. The delete undoes all annotations. Um, and you can't, so you have to delete them in the reverse order. So you can't delete annotation one and three. You can either delete five, four, three, two, one, and that sequence, or all. So you can't just select one to delete, unfortunately. So. Okay, so before we get off the whiteboard, I just want to show you that you can hide the presentation. And it took me a while the first time I did it, it goes off to the right. I expected it to drop down. It popped over to the right here. So if you want to go back to the presentation, you can just hit that blue button and it'll restore it to your screen. You can also upload a presentation. Um, one thing to note with uploading is no matter what file type you're uploading, it will convert to a PDF. 
So um, one of the issues that has come up up till now with this is that if you share a, a PowerPoint presentation that either has animations or timings or anything that you would like to reveal as you teach, when this process renders your PowerPoint presentation into a PDF file, it flattens everything and all of those hidden elements will display at once. So if you want to use a presentation that has timing or um, uh, animations, share your screen instead. So you can choose to share your screen. You can choose uh, an application window. You can share your entire screen like I am here. Um, I can share screen one, which is just the meeting without getting the infinite loop. So now it should replace my whiteboard with the screen I'm sharing. So it's just our meeting. But as I interact over here, you can't really see it, but um, pretending to chat here, it's quite a bit of a delay there, but it is possible. And it could be because I'm running two virtual meetings at the same time on the same machine. So that's one option. So if we pretend that this is my PowerPoint presentation, I could just toggle through those slides as necessary. You can also pause your screen share if you don't want to have anything happening. You can also stop your presentation completely. Um, do you want me to go through? Um, do you want me to go through uploading a presentation? It's pretty straightforward, but I'm happy to do it if um, there is a desire to see that happen. No one. OK. All right. Oh. OK, perfect. Yeah. OK, so if if questions come up, it's really straightforward. You can um, you click the presentations, you drop your file and you click confirm and that's it and you're done. And then it replaces this whiteboard with whatever file you've uploaded. Um, some of the other things that they've added, which is about time, is the ability to zoom in. So now you can zoom in on a presentation without having to use your control plus to zoom your screen in, which distorts things sometimes. Um, this was a, a much needed feature. You can also stretch it to fit the width of your screen. So I'm on a wide screen, so I can't zoom out anymore, but um, you can stretch it. You can also make it go full screen again and you can walk through um, the different settings very easily. Switching slides, they're all there. Um, oh, okay. Yes, great suggestion, Tanya. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to, oops, I'm going to, I'm just going to quick upload. Um, do I have anything I can upload? I do, I just have to find it. Sorry, I apologize. I should have had something ready. I'm looking for something. Oh, that's okay. I'll just use this. It might be today's session and my script. We'll see. So you have to wait for it to process. Once you get your little green, you're good. When you upload, it's going to convert the file and then it's going to replace your screen. And then I'll show you how to. So there it is. So there's our screen to toggle through. You click the slides to the right or the left. It'll include the pages you've got. Um, there is a limit. Um, I know it's 200 slides. Nothing larger than 200 slides can be uploaded. Um, is that right, Tanya? It's 200 slides and 30 megabytes. Thank you so much. Yes, 200 slides and 30 megabytes. So if you have a PowerPoint of 201 slides, it's not going to work for you. So something else to keep in mind. Um, if that occurs and you did have a huge presentation, you might want to consider breaking it up into two presentations. So then you can rotate which one is uploaded at the time to get through it all. Um, once you're done, if you want to go back to your, I'm going to stop sharing that screen because that was there. Um, 
you can go back and you can choose your default. It's going to let me. And then confirm if you want to go back to that um, whiteboard that you initially had. And then you can even preload some of these um, if you wanted to have a couple available throughout your presentation to toggle back and forth through. And if you're sharing your screen, so I'm going to just go back to this and I'm going to share. And you don't want to be sharing your screen anymore. You can either pause the screen sharing, which just freezes it, or you can change to the view presentation. So that will bring you back to this whiteboard. Sorry, I tend to skip around because things keep moving on me. <laughs> Sometimes I struggle to remember what's where. So that covers the whiteboard. We've talked about the audio button. So if you want to share your webcam, that's down here. If you want to unmute yourself during the meeting, you can do that here. Um, I can stop sharing my screen. You don't see that, but on my second screen that I was sharing, there is an option to stop it there as well. Um, it's uh, easy either way, whichever you prefer. And I think that's the majority of within the virtual classroom meeting. Um, I don't think I've missed anything. So I'm gonna pause again for any questions and I'm gonna stop the recording in here. And then we'll talk about just the last couple of things of leaving the meeting and how that renders. So no, yeah, okay, so yes, uh, I misspoke. Um, you can preload once you're in the meeting, but you can't preload before you've launched the meeting. So if I wanted to add presentations here, see how even though I'm not using them anymore, it's still listed, you could easily kind of have them already uploaded, like start your meeting, upload your presentation that you want to be able to toggle to, and then you can still set the default to be the whiteboard. And then when you're ready to switch to your actual presentation documentation, you can just check that one and click confirm and it will replace the whiteboard. So and to speed up, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, if you have a meeting set, say, let's say you have it set to start at 2 p.m. Um, on the 28th, um, as the you can go in about 10 minutes ahead of time to I set things 15. up right yeah 15 yeah. minutes I think you have 15 minutes i think yeah so you could get things set up before your students have access yeah. to the meeting at two okay yeah 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 i think it's 15 minutes from what i recall it was 15 minutes but students who do this through a video assignment they only get five minutes before the meeting starts before they can launch so Unless that changed for instructors as well, it should be 15 minutes. Yes, you would still launch the meeting and then you would you would launch your meeting, you would add your files through the presentations, switch back to your default whiteboard if you don't want one of your slides to be or one of your presentations to be the landing page, and then you can toggle between them during. And yes, it is 15 minutes before the scheduled time. So if you're starting at 1, you can access it at 12.45. I didn't test that today, but that's how it's always been. So I'm going to hope it's cha not changed. Um, OK, so the last couple. Oh, is there any way to have a waiting room? No, I know that's been a big ask to have. Sorry. so. Is there any way to have a waiting room for office hours where students are in this like lobby page? So this is pretty much it. I think it's it's tough. So you can either schedule specific meetings with specific students. Um, you could look at using breakout rooms. So maybe what you do is you have this meeting, you create um your breakout rooms oh sorry you create your breakout rooms you create the maximum eight you don't assign anyone i'm going to create them no one's in a oh i have to put at least someone in a room so i'll put myself in a room and i'm just going to cancel that but you could then invite participants so then as student two shows up you would drop them in room one you can even have them maybe you pre-assign and just say okay i'm going to be 
five minutes with this person, five minutes with that person. Um, the one hesitation I have with this is that once you reach your breakout room time limit, all of the other ones will get kicked out of their breakout rooms. So maybe it's just a one-off. As a student joins the meeting, you create a breakout room, meet with that student. The others wait in this main meeting. And then when you're done with student one, you can close that breakout room or just remove or start with breakout room two and then join that room. No students who are not invited to that second or third or fifth breakout room will have access to it. Only you as the instructor can move through them. So that might be one option. I believe WebEx has that feature though. So it's um, something that uh, ITMS Chorus can answer um, if that's a, a required functionality you're interested in. It is a bit of a workaround, but it's not the cleanest way to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna just talk about a couple more settings here. So as you're ending your meeting, you have two options here. You can choose to leave the meeting, which allows anyone else who has joined the meeting to stay and continue participating in that meeting. Um, so maybe you have to step off, but your TA is gonna stay online and talk to students for a couple minutes answering questions. Then you would want to leave the meeting because if you choose end meeting, it's going to immediately kick everyone in the meeting out and begin rendering the recording if it was recorded. Otherwise, it just kicks everyone out and closes down and it's no longer accessible and it can't be relaunched once you've ended the meeting. You can leave and come back, but you have to watch if you do that, that there is active in the meeting because I think if you leave for, I, I want to say 15 minutes again, if you've gone for more than 15 minutes, then you can't rejoin that meeting and would have to create a new instance. So I am going to end the meeting and kick everyone out. I'll get out. Are you sure? I'm going to say yes. And now everyone should have seen this. This session has ended and your meeting is over. You can close your window. You can close that. And then now you're back on your learn page. So I pre-recorded a meeting um, ahead of time so that I can show you a few more things about the recorded meeting. So after it's done rendering, you can preview the meeting. And I don't know if I joined the camera. No, I didn't. So when you see that um, film strip with an X looking thing, no one's camera was shared, so there's nothing there. This is the whiteboard. You can't tell, but this is your whiteboard. Um, and uh, if files were uploaded, you'll see it. And if chat messages happened, you'll also see those. You can also see if files were attached. So you can review all of that. You can also um, copy the public URL and share that link with students who may have missed the live meeting who want to review it at a later date. Um, you can manage your captions. This is another thing. So you can uh, import a captioning file. There are two formats. I don't remember which one didn't work for me, but we've I've been struggling with this functionality since they introduced it. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure how great it is. It's something we're still looking into um, and we'll be doing more testing on and hopefully we'll have something to report back on that in the future. Um, you can also download. So you have the option of downloading your meeting. It can take a while. It depends on the size of your meeting. You'll get it in a zip file. The downside with this is that when you unzip it is it's not just playable. So you can go to the play recording, which will open in a browser. And this is exactly what I already showed you with the, it's just a fuller screen view of it. Um, and then you can also see some of the files that were in there. We have steps if you want to add a downloaded recorded meeting to content. Um, this would be handy if you're recording lectures that you want to maybe use in a future offer. If you want to have copy from term to term, if you copy your courses forward, they have to be added to content. These active meetings, anything scheduled won't copy and the recorded ones won't be playable because none of the users in the new version of the course would have had access to the meeting and won't see the links. 
So if you want to reuse virtual classroom meetings, please follow the steps that it looks like Tanya has added to the chat. Thank you, Tanya. Um, follow those steps or contact Learn Help and we'll walk you through it because they are reusable. Um, another thing to note is that if you're um, prepping your course and you're working in um, a sandbox or a development course, don't bother scheduling your meetings because they don't copy over when you copy that course over. Only um, recordings can be copied. Um, so just something to be aware of. Don't waste your time on that prep work. Do that in the live version. Um, and your TA level fours can also schedule and launch virtual classroom meetings so they can run them for you. TA level three can launch a meeting, but I don't believe they can create. TA level three, two, or one cannot create uh, virtual classroom meetings. Um, so just something else to be aware of. And then there's also an attendance record. So if you've um, had students join, um, this person joined using an external link. So that's why it's listed as anonymous because they didn't have the Learn LTI pass that role to Bongo. So you'll be able to tell who your external users are versus who your internals are. Students would have a student role listed. You can see the minutes attended. You can also see how many chats participated in. Um, and then you can search for a user if you have a really large class list and you're wanting to look for a specific student's attendance record. And then if you wanted to delete a recorded meeting, you can do so after the recording has been rendered. I do recommend downloading it before you delete it, just in case you decide later that you might want it because we can't get it back. Um, the vendor may be able to, but um, we have to jump through a lot of hoops and go through a few different people to get to the vendor to actually have that happen. So delete with caution. And I think that's it. So I'll, uh, oh, nailed the time too. One minute to go. We have one minute for questions. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I can stay on a little longer if you have questions. 